Hey guys, this is Austin with Walton's TV, and welcome to Meat Gistics and How to Make Hot Dogs at waltonsinc.com. Meat Gistics is the process of transforming meat from animal to edible, and today we're going to be making 100% beef hot dogs from beef trim. However, hot dogs can truly be made from beef, pork, turkey, chicken, or a combination of any of them. For something to really be called a hot dog, though, it must have a very minute particle size or something that is emulsified. In a hot dog, we're going to reduce the meat particle size so small that the fat particles compared to the lean are basically indistinguishable. Another staple of hot dogs is to make a skinless product or not have a casing in the final product. This is not a requirement though. Many people still do and can use a natural casing or collagen casing. Today we're going to be making hot dogs with a cellulose plastic casing which will be removed when the hot dogs have been cooked and smoked and we'll also make a few hot dogs with collagen casings so we can compare the difference between the two. We're starting out with 100% beef in a 25 pound meat block that's about 85% lean and 15% fat. If it's possible with your meat block, separate the fat from the lean because when you mix and process just half the lean meat but use all the salt and seasoning in it, it'll help maintain a higher temporary salt content which will help with the emulsification of protein in the meat and the binding of the rest of the meat, fat, and water together in our final product. Our meat today is only 15% fat so we're going to do it all at once since it's very lean. However, having a higher fat content up to 30 or 40%, I would separate the fat and grind separately and mix separately for the first half of the mixing cycle. Now we're ready to grind. We're going to grind everything three times, first through a 3 8 inch plate or a 10 millimeter plate, then twice through a 1 8 inch or 3 millimeter plate. Now on to mixing. This is when we're gonna add all of our ingredients. And for 25 pounds of meat, we're gonna need one quart of ice cold water, one six ounce package of Sure Gel meat binder, one package of our Walton's hot dog seasoning, and one package of our one ounce Sure here. We're gonna start by mixing our Sure Gel in with our water, and it has a bit of a tendency to clump, so it's gonna take a couple minutes to try to get it as dissolved as possible. Then we'll start, up, start with our mixer, which is our Weston 44 pound meat mixer attached to our number 32 Weston grinder. I'm a bit lazy, so we're gonna hook these up together so we don't actually have to hand crank the meat mixer. The grinder will automatically turn the mixing paddles for us. Using a meat mixer is definitely preferred for making hot dogs. Many other products like a fresh brat, I'd say it's completely fine to hand mix, but while it is possible to hand mix for hot dogs, it's extremely difficult just because we need to make sure we get a lot of protein extraction. That's where the meat gets really sticky to make the final product turn out right. Hand mixing will take a lot longer if that's what you're going to do, but ideally we'll use a meat mixer. As we run the meat mixer, we can begin to slowly in, add in the seasoning, then the sure cure, and then the water and the sure gel mixture. We're going to mix for at least eight minutes, and we're going to reverse the direction of the, the mixing paddles about every minute. With the mixing done, here you can see just how sticky the meat is. The protein extraction is vital for our final product turning out correctly. With the mixing done, we're going to load up our Walton's 26 pound sausage stuffer and get to stuffing. Just be careful when loading the stuffer to try to avoid having any air pockets. For stuffing, just remember that stuffing correctly takes practice. You may not stuff a perfect product on the first try, but you should pick it up pretty quickly. We want the casing to be firm, but we don't want to for force it to where we get blowouts or so full that we cannot twist link. When we start twist linking, remember you only have to twist every other link. What you do is simply pinch the casing and twist, then move down the rope, pinch the casing and twist again. Repeat this process until the whole rope is twist linked.
We're almost ready to cook now. Since we did not use something like sodium erythorbate, smoked meat stabilizer, or cure accelerator, we're going to have to hold the hot dogs in the fridge for about 12 hours. Then we'll start cooking. If you want to avoid the holding period, simply use one of these additives like sodium erythorbate, smoked meat stabilizer, or cure accelerator available at waltonsinc.com, and you can cook your product immediately after stuffing into casings. Our cook cycle is going to be like this, 15 minutes at 120 degrees, 30 minutes at 130, 30 minutes at 140, 30 minutes at 150 with high humidity, and then increase the smokehouse temp to 175 and cook with high humidity until we hit an internal temp of 150 degrees and hold that internal temp for at least 4 minutes so we meet lethality. To guarantee meeting lethality, you can also cook until you reach an internal temp of 160 degrees. The final step is to just shower the product for 15 minutes to help set the casing and cool the product. When everything's done, we'll bring the hot dogs back in and we'll show you guys the final product. Here's our final cooked product. They turned out really good and they look fantastic. We did have a little bit of a problem getting the twist links to stay as we tried to hang the hot dogs on smoke sticks. So we changed a bit and we laid them flat on racks to smoke and then we tied a few of the twist links to help hold them together better. Do remember that since this is a cellulose casing that we're going to need to strip the casing off but it is pretty easy to do and there's a convenient black stripe on the casing so that we can see what casings have or have not yet been removed. Now we've got a few casings stripped off and here's what the final version of the hot dogs looks like compared to with the cellulose casing on plus the difference between the collagen version which we used for some of the hot dogs. The biggest advantage to using the collagen is that we don't have to strip off the casing and the collagen is edible. However, these that we did with the cellulose are really a more traditional hot dog. For a process for making hot dogs at home, these turned out really well, but to get it even closer to a real traditional hot dog, you'd want to use a bowl chopper or emulsifier plus a steam cook cycle instead of a normal smokehouse or oven. Without those things, these hot dogs did turn out really good and as good as we could have hoped for, and they are quite delicious. That wraps things up, so hopefully you have a better understanding on how to make hot dogs now. Make sure you guys subscribe to our Walton's TV channel to stay up to date on all of our latest videos. And if you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up and like button below. As always, visit our website at waltonsinc.com to find everything but the meat. That's all for today. Thanks for watching Meatgistics and how to make hot dogs. I'm Austin with Walton's TV, and we'll see you guys next time.